Hello, welcome back to the Mark Jannard Show, the tech show about hacking. In this video, I was watching the Sean Ryan show, and he had a, a astute hacker that talked about the dark web. So in this video, we're going to expound on the dark web. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it, so it's going to be fun. Let's get right into it. We're going dark. So let's look at the dark web definition. The dark web is a part of the internet that isn't indexed by search engines. You have no doubt heard talk of the dark web as a hotbed of criminal activity, and it is. Researchers Daniel Moore and Thomas Ridd of King's College in London classified the contents of 2,723 live dark web sites over a five-week period in 2015 and found that 50% hosts illicit material. You can buy credit card numbers, all manner of drugs, guns, counterfeit money, stolen subscription credentials, hack Netflix accounts, and software that helps you break into other people's computers. Buy login credentials to a 50,000 Bank of America account, counterfeit $20 bills, prepaid debit cards, or a lifetime Netflix premium account. You can hire hackers to attack computers for you. You can buy usernames and passwords. So let, let's look at what the deep web is versus the dark web. What's the difference? The term deep web and dark web are sometimes used interchangeably, but they are not the same. Deep web refers to anything on the internet that is not indexed by and therefore accessible via a search engine like Google. Deep web content includes anything behind a paywall or requires sign-in credentials. It also includes any content that its owners have blocked web crawlers from indexing. Medical records, fee-based content, membership websites, and confidential corporate web pages are just a few examples of what makes up the deep web. Estimates place the size of the deep web between 96 and 99 percent of the internet. Only a tiny portion of the internet is accessible through a standard web browser generally known as the clear web. The dark web is a subset of the deep web that is in uh, intentionally hidden requiring a specific browser, Tor, to access as explained. No one really knows the size of the dark web, but most estimates put it around 5% of the total internet. Again, not all the dark web is used for illicit purposes despite its ominous, ominous, om ominous sounding names. <laughs> So let's look at the dark web browser. All this activity, the vision of a bustling marketplace, might make you think that navigating the dark web is easy. It isn't. The place is as messy and chaotic as you would expect when everyone is anonymous and a substantial minority are out to scam others. Accessing the dark web requires the use of an uh, anonymizing browser called Tor. The Tor browser routes your web page request through a series of proxy servers operated by thousands of volunteers around the globe, rendering your IP address unidentifiable and untraceable. Tor works like magic, but the result is an experience that, that's like the dark web itself, unpredictable, unreliable, and maddeningly slow. Still, for those willing to put up with the inconvenience, the dark web provides a memorable uh, glimpse at the uh, scammy underbelly of the human experience without the risk of skulking around in a dark alley. So let's look at the dark web search engine. Dark web search engine exists, but even the best are challenged to keep up with the constantly shifting landscape. The experience is reminiscent of searching the web in the late 1990s. Even one of the best search engines called Grams returns results that are re repetitive and often irrelevant to the query. Link list, the hidden wiki, are another option, but the indices also return a frustrating number of timed out connections and 404 errors. So let's look at the for sale on the dark web. The dark web has flourished thanks to Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency that enables two parties to conduct a trusted transaction without knowing each other's identity. Bitcoin has been a major factor in the growth of the dark web, and the dark web has been a big factor in the growth of Bitcoin, says uh, Ticket. Nearly all dark web commerce sites conduct transactions in Bitcoin or some variant, but that doesn't mean it's safe to do business there. The inherent anonymity, uh, anonymity of the place attracts scammers and thieves. But what do you expect when buying guns or drugs? 
is your is our objective right dark web commerce sites have the same features as an e-retail operation including ratings slash reviews shopping carts and forums but there are important differences right one is quality control when both buyers and sellers are anonymous the credibility of any ratings system is dubious ratings are easily manipulated and even sellers with long track records have been known to suddenly disappear with their customers crypto coins only to set up shop later under a different alias. Most e-commerce providers offer some kind of escrow service that keeps customer funds on hold until the product has been delivered. However, in the event of a dispute, don't expect service with a smile. It's pretty much up to the buyer and the seller to duke it out. Every communication is encrypted, so even the simplest transaction requires a PGP key. Even completing a transaction is no guarantee that the goods will arrive. Many need to cross international borders and custom officials are cracking down on suspicious packages. The dark web news site deep dot dot web teams with stories of buyers who have been arrested or jailed for attempted purchases. As in the real world, the price you pay for stolen data fluctuates as the market changes, according to Privacy Affairs Dark Web Price Index 2021. These are the most current prices for some of the data and services commonly traded over the dark web. Clone credit card with PIN is $25 to $35. Credit card details with account balance up to $5,000 right is $240 stolen online banking logins with at least 2000 in the account $120 PayPal transfers from stolen accounts is 50 to $340 hacked Coinbase verified account $610 hacked social media account one to $60 hacked Gmail account $80 hacked eBay account with good reputation $1,000 so in a nutshell, is the dark web illegal? Eh, I don't want you to believe, uh, you know, I don't want you to leave with the impression that everything on the dark web is nefarious or illegal. The Tor network began as an anonymous communications channel, and it still serves a valuable purpose in helping people communicate in environments that are hostile to free speech. So uh, that was my overview of the dark web. Please let me know your thoughts. Please let me know your opinion. I love you. Stay safe. Please hit the notification bell. Please hit the subscribe button. Stay safe. I'll see you on the next video.